Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This we can uh, increase the level of uh, complexity in uh, this analysis by using this uh, transition state theory, which we will go into uh, into into a little bit details. Uh, the reason for going into these details is not only about learning about this itself, but it will also clear our uh, understanding of how to apply different techniques of how do you expand, how do you write this reaction rates as such for generalized reactions, how do you apply the QSS assumption, how do you apply the partial equilibrium assumption. So, in this that is why I have chosen this transition state theory, uh, state theory derivation because it not only gives you a, a very interesting idea of uh, what is happening what are the steps involved it is not only just collision there are more steps involved and it will become very apparent that there must be a step involved in uh, in, in a chemical reaction um, which actually comes from the concept of activation energy. But it will also this uh, this analysis will also tell you will also give you the confidence to basically apply reactions uh, ap right reactions in their generalized form um, and then uh, apply the uh, QSS assumption and the partial equilibrium assumption as the case may be. Okay. Now, uh, yes, we talked about activation energy in the collision uh, uh, in the collision uh, theory, in the collisional uh, theory of uh, of uh, chemical reactions. But here we see that it is recognized that upon collision of between molecules of the reactants with a collision energy in excess of Ea, that is that is what we assumed also. But here we add one more thing, which was not there. We consider the formation of a highly energized unstable molecule called the activated complex. Okay. So, this we did not consider before. Now, this is important because this basically accounts for all the different changes of the structure that is taking place in the molecule. All right. So, this theory is actually a very sophisticated theory and present day calculations of this rate constants K, Ea. Uh, 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 T or uh, alpha B all these things actually use transition state theory of course, in a higher level of complexity that what we will be doing here, but the foundations are will be laid in here and those uh, those uh, uh, calculations those very uh, modern calculations involve transition state theory to calculate the rate constants. Okay. But the basic funda is this that is a highly energized unstable molecule called the activated complex is formed. Now, these activated complex once formed possess a number of vibrational modes and the bonding of one of these modes is particularly weak okay. and during one the first or one or the first such outward vibration the complex breaks up to produce two product molecules. So, yes reactant goes into products as it happens, okay, but it does not go into a product directly it goes into the products through an intermediate step which is the formation of this activated complex. Okay. So, now let us consider how this activated complex is formed. Okay. So, the reaction scheme of this is actually I will see is very interesting it is given by like a generalized reaction scheme it is given like R i is the reactants, K 1 f is the forward reactant reaction rate constant, K 1 b is the backward react constant reactant rate constant reaction rate constant and this R cross is formed. R cross is the activated complex. Okay. So, this is the first step, step 1. Step 2 is this activated complex being a highly unstable molecule decomposes through of reaction rate constant K 2 to form products.
okay. So, in this case we say that the backward reaction is slow, so we do not consider that, okay. Now, so you see that this is a very generalized reaction uh, scheme that we have written and this will also uh, allow us to understand the whole things that we discussed uh, 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 previously, okay. So, now we are interested in the rate of change of concentration of the reactant, okay. So, we will write D C R I D T, okay. That is given by, now you remember the, the thing that is omega i cap divided by nu i double dash minus nu i dash is equal to omega j cap by nu j double dash minus nu j dash is equal to omega reaction rate, right. You remember this and this is nothing but d c i d t, this is nothing but d c j d t. Okay. So, now we can write as this for d c r i you see this is 0, this is 1, this is essentially a new i dash not 1 sorry. Okay. So, we can write okay. So, the rate of change of concentration of R i changes because it is consumed in the forward reaction, okay. but it is also being produced in the backward reaction when R cross recombines back reforms back to R i. So, that will contribute. What will be the uh, next what we will write? What is this uh, this form take for R i R plus plus? You see there is only one species involved that is R so not R plus plus R cross. So, and that is exponent the stoichiometric exponent of that is 1. So, we will only write right. Similarly, For the next reaction we can write not only for the next reaction for the re formation of the activated complex, the rate of formation of the activated complex we can write because the rate of the activated complex this leads to the production and this leads to the depletion of the activated complex. Okay. Now, we assume that this reaction partial equilibrium exists in this reaction. Okay. That means, partial equilibrium exists between the reactants and the activated complex. Okay, and then we will assume that the activated complex itself is a steady state species. So, these are the two assumptions we will make, but what is the consequence of this? The consequence of this is that if this is 0, we basically this goes on this side and this goes on this side, we can write C r plus plus is nothing but and these two cancels and this we write as k 1 f by k 1 b times product of j is equal to 1 to n c j nu j dashed right and this is we know it is k c. So, we will represent this by this. The equilibrium constant for the reaction in which the activated complex is formed all right. Now, if you multiply this reaction with nu i dashed nu i dashed, nu i dashed and add these two reactions, okay. what will you find? You will find that d c r i d t 
plus new i dashed dcr dt is equal to what? This goes to 0. I think I have missed a Mm. I think this is the one reaction is missed. Yeah, actually here there is also so he in this reaction we considered this is we are considering the product we are considering the rate of change of R i right. So, R i is formed by basically this by decomposition of we are we are considering the rate of change of concentra concentration of R cross. So, R cross is formed by basically what are the processes it is formed by the decomposition of R i which is accounted for this ok. It is formed it is form it is reduced by the by the by the by when R, R cross goes back to R i but it also involves a second reaction we have not considered that. So, it can it is essentially minus k 2 c r plus plus ok. So, that we have not considered. So, now when we add these things we see that this one cancels this this cancels this ok and this is this and we are left with only this reaction only left with this contribution k 2 C r plus plus all right. Now, you see we applied partial equilibrium of this thing of uh, uh, of the first reaction, uh, but uh, uh, but which uh, but that does not mean that this can be 0 when you compare with the production or the rate of change of the consideration of r cross all right. In fact, we would argue that this is a steady state species and the this the rate of change of this species is equal to 0. In fact, partial equilibrium assumption does not have anything to do with the rate of change of R i. Here it is equal to 0 because this is also the total uh, reaction rate this is the forward reaction and this is the backward reaction rate. So, the sum of these two is essentially omega ok that is why this is equal to 0. But here we say that this quantity because it is essentially a because it is essentially a chain carrier it is this quantity which goes to 0 and which is rather much small than this quantity ok. So, then what we are left with is this part this and we can substitute the relationship from here to here and we can find that d c r i d t is equal to minus nu i dashed k 2 k c cross nu j dashed ok. Now, if we erase everything here, if we erase everything, and sum these two reactions what we will get the overall reaction is this thing with the overall rate constant reactant goes to products right. Now, if you compare now and how would you have written this thing? you would have written this thing in this manner that is d c r i for this overall reaction you could have written d c r i d t is equal to minus nu i dashed reaction rate constant k right. 
and see what you have got here is exactly similar this part and these parts are exactly similar this part is also similar. So, then it means that k is essentially this remaining part it means k is equal to k 2 and k c plus cross you must not confuse between k 2 and k c this is the equilibrium constant and this is the rate constant of the second reaction. Okay. So, then using this we can obtain the net rate constant of this reactants going into products, but for an elementary reaction okay. this is definitely not for global reactions where methane plus oxygen goes to water and carbon dioxide. This is true for a reaction which interacts at the molecular level H plus O 2 going to O H plus O. We are decomposing that reaction H plus O 2 going to O H plus O into two steps okay, where H plus O 2 reacts to form an activated complex. Okay. But the overall rate constant of this elementary reaction H plus O 2 going to O H plus O that is given by this kind of a thing k is equal to k 2 plus k c cross all right. Now, how do you obtain k c cross? we obtain that one we can obtain k c cross by the equilibrium which can be it can be tabulated k c obtaining k c is not difficult obtaining k 2 is a difficult part. We can obtain k 2 by considering that the vibrational energy of the per particular bond which ruptures is provided by the translational kinetic energy of the two colliding molecules this is where the collision comes in. So, we assume that the collisional kinetic energy is equal to the vibrational energy collisional kinetic energy is given by 1 k t is equal to h naught which is the Planck's constant times the nu which is the frequency okay. and we assume that the products form during one vibration and the decay rate is given by k 2 and the vibrational frequency are given by nu and we said the decay rate is equal to the vibrational frequency because both you see both have units of 1 per second okay, decay rate and then we can set it like this is equal to nu and then we can if you substitute this here what you will get is this is your k 2 essentially and this is your k c cross. So, the overall rate constant for the reaction is, is was if you remember k 2 times k c cross and then that is given by this. So, now using the law of mass action using the this postulates uh, this this assumption from uh, this actually comes from quantum mechanics that the vibrational energy is equal to h 0 times nu the first mode of vibration okay we can essentially find the this thing the reaction rate constant so if we just recapitulate what we have done we have done that we have uh, what we have done is that we have considered the activation formation of this activated complex where this reactance goes to form this activated complex and this activated complex goes to form the products in two steps okay first one involves k1 f k1 b and the second one rate constant k2 and uh, this is actually the state of the activated complex that we can consider and uh, this involves the two reaction rates that are the rate of change of uh, the concentration of ri and the rate of change of the concentration of r cross and these are given by these two uh, sets of equations and we can apply partial equilibrium for the activation step which gives this thing and we can apply the partial steady st uh, quasi steady state assumption for r cross which gives this and then when we compare with the overall reaction we get k is equal to k 2 times k c cross and uh, uh, by assuming that the kinetic energy is equal to the vibration energy we can arrive at this uh, formula that k is equal to uh, sorry this this is k 2 k is equal to k c and k c cross and we can arrive at this formula that k is equal to k 0 t divided by the Planck's constant times k c plus. Okay. 
So, this is a very very important uh, derivation. This tells you how actually the this not only tells you how to derive the rate constant, but it also tells you how the reaction is happening between two molecules. Okay. Now, of course, then you can relate uh, this we can go from Kc to Kp I mean just I will just show you the steps and uh, uh, by using this uh, and then you can use it in terms of writing in terms of the Gibbs free energy and uh, you can use the rate constant in terms of the uh, uh, Gibbs free uh, as you know the delta G 0 cross for this change of the Gibbs free energy for this process is given by the enthalpy uh, uh, change in enthalpy times the temperature times change in entropy and then you can write it like this and you can basically if we can find it in uh, this kind of a form. Okay. If you are interested you can look into Law's book or any other book on this transition state theory, but I will not go into the details. But this is how you can finally, represent uh, K in this kind of a manner which is similar to our uh, Arrhenius form. Okay. So, now uh, then the last thing uh, of this the reaction rate theory that remains is the theory of essentially unimolecular reaction. The unimolecular reaction is uh, kind of an isomerization reaction or a decomposition reaction when a when a molecule itself uh, spontaneously can go into form a product um, is a really high pressure limit of a second order reaction. Actually the this does not happen spontaneously or it itself it needs to be collided with another molecule M, but M as such does not participate in the reaction because it does not change in its own structure. So, M can be an inert gas or any other molecule as such which uh, does not participate in the reaction, but it changes the R to P as you see here. Okay. Now, these unimolecular reactions have a very interesting character. The rate constant of these reactions have they are become basi basically pressure dependent. Now, when the rate constant become pressure dependent if you are a, if you are an engineer if you are an, uh, if you are designing an engine which works at a, for a gas turbine engine or an IC engine you must be concerned okay, because all these engines operate at high pressure and you need to basically have the reaction rates at high pressure. Okay. Uh, gas turbine engine operates at a 30 40 bar or 30 40 atmosphere. So, which is roughly about say here. So, as you can see that the rate constant for these unimolecular reactions at 30 40 bar is very different from the rate constant what is that here right. And basically it comes from the fact that uh, that is basically the change of the order of the reaction ok. So, for the uh, spontaneous reaction we can write that dcr dt is equal to minus k is times cr where uh, at the when pressure tends to infinity this is essentially a first order reaction. But when as pressure tends to 0 this behaves a second order reactions we can we can write the pressure k is, is a basically you see that it has a uh, it has a it, it has a it behaves in, uh, in a linear manner and when you behaves in a linear manner we can write k is equal to k 0 times p and pressure as you know is proportional to the number of moles p is equal to nrt uh, p is equal to uh, 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 p v is equal to nrt v is equal to 1 if you said v equal to 1 then you can write p is equal to ni and you can as you know you can convert ni to concentration. So, you can write p is equal to k 0 times cr and as p tends to 0 you can becomes a second order reaction. So, it beca you see that up to uh, in the high pressure limit this k infinity is equal to constant in the low pressure limit it k is equal to k 0 times p is a linear um, mm. as a linear behavior. Now, how why does this happen this can be explained by Lindemann's theory which also considers this form of a state of an energized uh, state uh, where r plus r is the is a is a is a molecule our reactant it is collided with another third body m which can be the r itself which can be an inert uh, nitrogen or some other things and it becomes an energized it achieves an energy energy state r star and there is m and then there is another step it is very similar to the previous transition state theory though there are important steps points of deviation. So, here also we see that it in it uh, this formation from r to p essentially involves in two steps this one and this one um, uh, it first goes into an energy state and then the energy state decays to form this p ok. And then once again similar to that we can write this uh, equation like this I uh, will not go into the details and then for the we can first write and similar to the transition state theory we can write an equation for uh, dc r dt we can write an equation from dc r star dt uh, like this. Please uh, proceed with these steps this will give you the confidence of how to write reactions as such. Uh, mm, and then uh, we can assume steady state for the species r star, but we will not assume this partial equilibrium for the species for the first uh, reaction. This is because uh, this will give you the second order nature of the reaction. Mm, and then you set uh, basically if what we find is that this is this important this final result is interesting. This final result that you find is that k can be expressed as k 2 times k 1 uh, f divided by k 1 b divided by 1 plus k 2 by k 1 b times c m 
So, you see that CM appears in the downstairs of the downstairs, okay. So, it appears as a, as a denominator of the full denominator. Mm. So, you see that if you set uh, CM to infinity that is at a very high pressure at very high pressure this concentration of CM can be very high. And so, you see what happens is that K infinity uh, tends to uh, this constant value, okay. Whereas, if CM tends to 0, it becomes K0 becomes, uh, this is because if CM tends to infinity, what happens is that uh, uh, this whole term tends to 0, right. So, you are only left with this, which is a constant, that is what you get here, right. Whereas, on the second case, if CM tends to 0, if CM tends to 0, okay, what you will see is, is that you can basically neglect this 1 and you this appears in the full upstairs and K0 is, is nothing but K1 times CM. And uh, as uh, CM tends to 0, we can write this as essentially proportional to pressure and this becomes a second order and give this gives you the, uh, the, the this and this kind of a behavior. So, we can combine the two and write 1 by K is essentially uh, um, uh, 1 by K is nothing but uh, this thing. 1 by k infinity plus 1 by uh, k 0. So, this is the thing of the Lindemann reaction, Lindemann mechanism, okay. Straight chain reactions, straight, now chain, what do you mean by straight chain carriers are those things, are those basically the intermediates that is formed as a result of the reaction between the, uh, the react, uh, the reactants uh, breaking down into forming several things. So, as I said, if you were com comparing, if you were considering hydrogen oxygen combustion, it is uh, nothing but, uh, uh, nothing but your uh, um, uh, your uh, if you are considering the H 2 and O 2 uh, re reaction mechanism, it is nothing but this chain carriers and nothing but H O O H all these things right. Now, what is straight chain reaction? Straight chain reaction is when consumption of one radical leads to production of another radical, but one more only. One radical goes to one radical, not more radicals ok. So, these are examples of hydrogen halogen systems. So, for example, you see that uh, uh, the chain initiation, this is how the X 2 that is a halogen when it is attacked with a third body M breaks up into X and X and forms M. This is the chain initiation and then it uh, this X reacts with uh, H 2 um, which X is essentially the chain carrier which uh, uh, reacts with H 2 to form H X plus H X, but 1 X gives rise to 1 H. So, another H that is formed gives rise to another X. So, X plus X this is a termination chain termination reaction and this is once again the chain carry reaction. But everywhere you see that uh, this, this and this, 1 x gives rise to 1 h, 1 chain carrier gives rise to another chain carrier, 1 chain carrier gives rise to another chain carrier, 1 chain carrier gives rise to another chain carrier and they are associated with termination reaction. So, in these reactions there is no like formation multiplication of these chain carriers, okay. Now, that is very important as we will see later. So, I will not uh, uh, go into the details of this, uh, we can find out all this uh, analysis and uh, uh, we can show that uh, uh, different things of the complex uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, we can obtain the, for example, the final rate of formation of this uh, d h x d t and uh, compare that with the global one step reaction. And uh, the only point that I would like to make here is that this slide shows you the importance of the consideration of the detailed reactions, okay. So, from the detailed analysis which you can if you want uh, you can uh, go through um, uh, once again uh, these are the different reaction rates uh, uh, considering all these uh, uh, different uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steps you can far write down the reaction rates for each of these five steps and uh, and then you can ab uh, apply the steady state assumption and uh, then we can find out the net rate of formation of the product which is our for interest that is the dhx which is the hx so uh, we see that uh, dhx dt is given by this complex uh, form uh, um, which is uh, this okay now the thing is that if you had considered one step reaction, you would have got d h x d t is nothing but twice times k 0 which is the overall rate constant times h 2 and x 2. Now, you see the big difference between these things. You see the exponents of h 2 and h 2 is same fine, but this is 1, this is half. There is no h x in the denominator, there is h x d in the denominator here, there is no h x in the denominator here, there is x 2 in the denominator here, there is no x 2 in the denominator here, right. So, all these differences and this, this is a little bit complicated step. So, the overall rate of formation of d h x d t which is our final product is drastically different 
when you consider the detailed mechanisms versus when you consider the one step mechanism ok. So, uh, you see that instead of the linear uh, uh, dependence here this is a half to the power of half dependence and formation of HF, HX itself inhibits the reaction inhibits the formation of HX which is not at all captured here. So, vital information is missing and this is one of the reasons why you need to undergo where you need, uh, despite the effort and despite the computational power required to uh, to include detailed reactions in your code we must always look forward to at least some level of details of reaction mechanisms when we do combustion calculations unless there is some specific need that it is not at all required. Now, this shows you why it is required right. Now, we will talk about branch chain reaction in a hydrogen oxygen system and uh, uh, branch chain reactions are very very important and the hallmark of combustion ok. Now, why? Because you see here there is a very big difference between the halogen uh, systems versus the hydrogen oxygen system which is the this is the combustion reactions. You see three important um, uh, chain uh, uh, reactions involving chain carrier. The most important hallmark of combustion reaction is the introduction of these chain branching reactions ok. Now, you must remember that these chain carriers H, O, OH these are very highly energetic molecules very highly energetic uh, 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 radicals ok. So, you see when H atom att attacks an uh, oxygen molecule it forms OH and O. So, one radical gives rise to two radicals this is the chain branching step and that is very important. One O atom when it attacks an hydrogen molecule gives rise to two radicals ok. So, here it is chain carrying one radical gives rise to another radical that is H, but here one radical gives rise to OH and one radical gives to O here one radical gives rise to OH another and it gives rise to another radical H. So, there is a multiplication of these chain carriers that is happening in these steps ok and of course, this does not happen in one mole it happens to series of molecules right. So, in each if there is a is a factor of 2 of involved in each reaction that is happening in many many molecules of oxygen many many molecules of hydrogen that is there are there. So, with uh, each of these involve like multiplication of OH and uh, multiplication of these chain carriers and these result in the explosive or this very rapid uh, reactions that are involved in combustion it is a chain branching reaction. And also of course, the, uh, the, 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 the thermal nature of the reaction that which involves this large arrhenius number which confines reactions in a very short amount of time. So, this, uh, this exponential nature of this reaction rates large arrhenius number and these things are actually contribute to the large uh, things uh, large uh, very fast nature of the combustion reactions. So, you see that in this H 1 to H 3 if you consider the net st overall step 3 O H 2 plus 2 o plus O 2 go rise to H 2 O plus 2 H which shows 2 H radicals are produced per cycle right. So, that is very very important. So, this radicals are multiplied ok. Now, chain carrying steps can be weakening because you see here H plus O 2 plus M goes to form H O 2 plus M and H O 2 is rather uh, benign uh, rather inactive radical which does not is not very which is not very energetic. So, it can be weakening also. Now, here we will consider a very uh, generalized description of combustion reactions this is very important. Now, if they we understand this we will basically understand the basic structure by which a fuel becomes a product. We will consider N R ok. What is R? R can be considered a radical like say methyl radical ok. So, N R means nothing but this sort of things ok many number of CH3, CH3, CH3 involved or it can be like uh, this itself ok, where n is equal to 2 alright. So, let us consider this reaction, let us consider how basically the uh, the the, um, uh, the combustion happens. Now, the most important thing is that when you have this NR which is a fairly large molecule it must be broken down into small molecules ok. So, there must be it must broken down and it there through a series of steps it will go and form the products. What are those steps? So, you see the NR first forms a C 
what is C? C is nothing but a chain carrier, okay. It can be H, it can be OH, it can be O, anything, okay. Now, this chain carrier that is formed goes and attacks R in this step. So, R plus C leads to production of more chain carriers. Now, you, you would ask that this is not balanced, but here we are talking about generalized chain carriers. So, this R can be CH3, 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 etc., this C can be H and this AC means there are multiple chain carriers being formed. It can be H, it can be, it can be H plus O plus OH, something like that. A is the multiplication factor of the chain carrier, not the species itself, okay, and product is formed. So, C then this chain carrier then attacks R plus R plus R and it basically forms products. So, you see that C is basically now absorbed to form the product that is why it is a gas termination and the previous is basically the chain branching cycle and then this C can also what go and hit a wall and it can get deactivated and that is basically the go form a product and that is basically the wall termination. Now, we can write down the full thing we can we are interested basically in the rate of change of C and we can write down the full thing you should, you should write it on yourself. We can write down the full thing as considering all the reactions this comes from the first reaction chain carrying initiation step these carries comes from the second reaction chain branching step a minus 1 is because a is the, uh, the corresponds to the production of C and minus because C is 1 C is consumed. So, it is essentially a minus 1 this considers comes from the gas termination step and this comes from the wall termination step. Okay. So, summing up all these four contributions we can arrive at this thing okay. k 1 r to the power of n plus k 2 times r times a minus a c times c. Now, you see I would ask what AC is, AC is, uh, is a result I mean this is result written in a very compact form where AC is nothing but this one, this is nothing but algebra, but uh, it is correct. So, um, we can we can bear with this. So, when you write it in this form you see the benefit. So, it has got K 1 up to the power of n times K 2 R and this C. So, we can write D C D T is equal to this. Now, you see if we just forget about if we just uh, forget about this part now and just focus only on this part you will see that this is of the form d c d t is equal to some constant b times c ok. Now, what is this form if you solve it you will find that it is essentially becomes d ln c d t times b d t d ln c is equal to b d t and if you integrate it will you will have c is equal to e to the power of some things times t. So, it has got an exponential behavior, okay. it can have an exponential behavior. Now, when can an exponential blow up? An exponential blow up when its exponent is positive. right? So, you see that this is essentially our exponent. So, when it when a greater than a c it, this, this essentially blows up then c essentially the c concentration rapidly increases and you know that when c concentration rapidly increases the reaction will proceed very very fast because c are very energetic. Whereas, it delays or decays if A is less than A C. Okay. Now, what is happening? How can we find out where it will blow up and where it will not blow up? We have to look into basically A C. Okay. Now, see A C has the form 1 plus k g times r square plus k w divided by r. Okay. Now, as you know we can think that as pressure increases the concentration of r increases as pressure decreases the concentration of r decreases. So, we can think that pressure is essentially proportional to r. So, in the low pressure limit as pressure goes to 0 we can say that r also goes to 0. So, when r goes to 0 this term becomes immaterial. So, it we can write A c as uh, 1 plus k w by k 2 times r this is what we get. And now if r goes to 0 A c goes to infinity of course, if A c is very large then this whole term is negative and there is no explosion that is there is no rapid increase of C and then there is no rapid uh, increase in the overall reaction rate. Okay. Whereas, if P tends to infinity R also tends to infinity okay, and A C becomes and now in this case what we can write is that we can uh, we can uh, get uh, this into absorbed into this and this can be neglected this part can be neglected and this becomes essentially this okay so it's basically basically becomes 1 plus kg times 
r k g times r divided by k 2 as p tends to infinity r tends to infinity this whole term tends to infinity. So, we see that both when pressure is very low or when pressure is very small a c tends to infinity. Since a c has a negative sign in front when a c tends to infinity the d c d t term invariably is basically becomes a form of e to the power of minus a c times t and that decays. Okay. So, reaction rate of C will decay with time. So, there is no rapid explosion. So, A C can only be small in the intermediate range when P is neither too close to 0 neither too close to infinity and that is what is C here that when pressure is small it is no explosive non explosive means once again explosive does not have nothing to do with the blast or anything it only means that there is a rapid increase of the reactions with rapid release of energy. Okay. So, large pressure large pressure small pressure reactions are non explosive reactions are not favored combustion reactions are not favored and only in this intermediate peninsula that combustion reactions are favored all right. We will just uh, briefly describe the flame inhibitors that uh, these are the halogenated compounds are good inhibitors because this halogen X scavenges hydrogen atom which is a very highly energetic molecule uh, uh, basically chain carrier and the halogen radical present either as halogen acid or halogen hydrocarbon and it is easier to dissociate the halogen from the compound than hydrogen. These are the different bond energies, but you must also remember that there is a hydrocarbon segment which can release heat upon oxidation and the large compounds can also absorb uh, more heat. And uh, finally, uh, we have discussed a lot about uh, um, the, the theoretical derivation about uh, of, of K which is very important, but these theory as you know in any branch of science the theory that you deliver that you develop or the computations that you do that has to be validated by experiments. So, those reaction rate constants must be validated by experiments either for individual reactions or for global parameters how do you do that. So, these are few of the techniques we have few of the experimental setups actually you see to uh, which uh, which uses uh, through which this uh, uh, reaction uh, rate constants are evaluated it is rapid compression machine rapid compression machine is very much like a like a uh, combination of spark and uh, SI engine or a diesel engine that it fills up you fill up uh, this uh, this part of the of this rapid compression machine with this your charge with your reactant and then you compress it as the compress as you as you increase the pressure and temperature uh, ignition happens okay but uh, still there are some problems with the flow effect etc turbulent flow reactor is when you uh, uh, mix it uh, this this reactants and you increase a feed of a hot gas which initiate the reactions and the most important uh, 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 most important uh, experimental setup that has evolved for evaluating things like ignition delay which will come later or even reaction rate constants for single reactions uh, are is the shock tube. Mm, and uh, what it has is basically it has a driver section and a driven section driven section. So, this part has got very is you fill it up and you increase the pressure at a very very high level. So, when the pressure increases uh, this driver section and the driven section is initially before you start the experiment is separated by a diaphragm. Okay. Now, when the pressure increases in this driver section the diaphragm ruptures and a shock wave propagates okay. and the shock wave propagates it hits back uh, here uh, it goes into the end wall this part you fill it up with a with the reactants the rate constants of which you want to measure. Okay, or the ignition delay of which you want to measure. So you this part you fill up with fill it up with the fuel air mixture. So the shock goes and hits this end wall and it reflects back. And as you know, the downstream of a shock, you have got increased pressure and temperature. So there is almost an instantaneous increase in pressure and temperature. And you can by 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 controlling the shock motion, you can control the pressure and temperature that is being raised raised to, and we can basically estimate your rate constant at that given temperature and pressure. Laminar flame is also useful, but then you know the difference between the flame and this kind of reactor is that 
that flame involves transport, it involves conduction, it involves uh, uh, diffusion it uh, and whereas these things that we have discussed in the shock tube uh, even though there are some problems with recent problems uh, that has emerged with flow non homogeneities but still it is the it is as close to homogeneous as possible okay it is uh, one of the best methods to obtain uh, the reaction rate constants and um, because uh, there is no only only reaction is happening in a, in a given amount of time there is no transport effects involved but still the laminar flame is used to basically validate things like uh, as you will see later uh, when you can combine uh, the reaction rate and transport and obtain quantities like laminar flame speed but uh, so uh, with this class we have covered a lot of ground in the sense that mm -hmm. we have discussed uh, laws of mass action we have discussed uh, basically how to write a reaction rate in terms of the reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients we have covered how uh, basically uh, what is the arrhenius law um, what is activ activation energy and then uh, we have uh, gone on to describe uh, the reaction rate constants which is very very important uh, parameter in combustion uh, uh, in combustion research and combustion study as such uh, because as you will see later this will determine this basically determines how fast the reaction proceeds and um, the rate at which the if the reaction proceeds fast uh, you can have a liberty to design your combustor in such some manner if the reaction proceeds slow you have to redesign it in a different manner. So, this somehow goes into, into combustion engineering and design in a big manner and of course, as we will see later these rate constants have a very big role in how pollutants are being formed okay? that the, some pollutants are formed quickly, some pollutants are formed slowly. So, these uh, rate constants also determine the um, formation of the, uh, the time scale for the formation of the pollutants and these determine whether ultimately these determine how a flame will uh, could be stabilized inside a combustor or it cannot be stabilized inside a combustor. So, then we have uh, to uh, develop further mechanistic uh, um, uh, understanding of the reaction rate constants and how reactions actually take place. We have gone on to describe two kinds of theories uh, which is the collision rate theory uh, uh, which is the collision theory and the transition state theory and also we have discussed unimolecular reactions how pressure can affect reactions the two high pressure limit the low pressure limit and then we have gone on to describe this uh, generalized. Uh, behavior of uh, combustion reactions where which highlights that uh, in combustion the very important part is this chain branching cycle alongside this large activation energy. So, these large activation energy and this chain branching these are the two most important hallmarks of combustion science and, um, and we need to determine them experimentally also and that we have seen that uh, this uh, rapid compression machine and shock tubes and these are the most important techniques by experimental setup by which these uh, parameters can be determined. So, thank you we will meet again um, uh, and uh, there we will discuss the oxidation mechanism of fuels where we will use this kinetic principles to discover to discuss actual uh, reactions that uh, happen in a combustion reaction. Thank you very much.